Hey guys and welcome to Rosa Scale. So you seem to be liking my U.com videos and the number one question that I keep getting is regarding how does U.com compare to perplexity.ai and also po.com. So in this video today we will be comparing U.com to perplexity AI against the following criteria. So we'll look at the pricing, the amount of models each tool possesses, then the accuracy in SEO, we'll look at different modes, images, GPTs, unique features and whatnot. So by the end of the video you have a complete picture and we'll be able to finally decide on which two to choose between these two. Before I go on, if you follow the link under this video, you'll be able to claim my free custom ChatGPT prompts. This used to be a paid product, now it's free. And not only will you get all the prompts from many of my videos, including the famous sequence prompt, the SEO one-click prompt, the one-click readability prompt, but you will also get access to my newsletter where I'm sharing my personal stories, my struggles, my wins, and also each newsletter contains exclusive content that I am not sharing on YouTube. So let's get started. So the first one is kind of obvious. This is pricing. Perplexity AI is going to cost you 20 bucks per month, whereas U.com is only 15. So in this regard, U.com is a clear winner. It's very expensive. Next let's look at the models. If we go to perplexity settings. We have one, two, three, four, five models including the default one. This is going to be the sixth one. So we have sonar large 32k. We have the newest GPT-40. We have the GPT-4 turbo and then Claw 3 sonnet and Claw 3 opus. And I don't see Haiku here and it's kind of confusing because every time I check on these models inside of perplexity I get a different list of models. So they keep shuffling this up. I don't know why but it is what it is, six models. However, if we go to u.com, you have a whole suite of models. So we have the GBD family, three, then Claude, another four, so this makes it seven, Llama, eight, Gemini 8, 9, 10. So 15 models in total. And we have some very unique models like Dolphin, which is the uncensored model. We have the command R, which gives you the longest output and all the major models are present for 15 bucks per month. So six in perplexity versus 15 inside of u.com so u.com is a clear winner now let's check accuracy even though i think this is going to be very even steven so i'm using opus inside of perplexity and the query is going to be as follows and i also toggle the pro to the right to get the most up-to-date data who won the 2024 french open in men's singles and we'll be asking the same inside of u.com let me choose cloud 3 opus so we have some relevant pictures alluding to who the winner was of According to the provided search results, Carlos Alcaraz won the 2024 French Open men's singles title by defeating Alexander Zverev in the final. The match went to five sets with Alcaraz prevailing 6-3, 2-6, 5-7, 6-1, 6-2 in a thrilling contest that lasted 4 hours and 19 minutes. With this victory, 21-year-old Alcaraz claimed his third Grand Slam title, making him the youngest ever player to win major trophies on all three surfaces. Okay, and this is the correct information. You can see all the citations. And if you wanted to go to the source, you click on this citation and then you click on the URL. So with U.com it's a little bit different. So we got the same result as in uh, Carlos Alcaraz was the winner. This is more of a blue blog style response. So this is a historic achievement. This talks about how this is important. Then talking about the match details, the context in which the tournament was being carried out. And if you wanted to check the sources, you could click here and also go to the sidebar on the right. And I prefer this way of checking the citations. And even though I like the response of U.com better, I think uh, this is a tie. So they both are accurate. Now for the SEO, this is going to be my favorite one-click SEO prompt available in my ChatGPT library. So you go to one-click SEO prompt. And this is the actual prompt. It takes data from NeuronWriter, the outline, the LSA keywords, and I'm also including my own links. So let's start a new thread. Let's attach a file. The file is links.txt, and this is referenced in the prompt itself. And once again, I am asking Perplexity to write a 2000 word article using this outline. Then I'm asking it to use these NLP keywords, and finally insert three to five relevant internal links. And obviously, I'll do the same with u.com. Okay, so u.com was faster and we can see some internal links. One, two, a nice looking table. So this is a shorter output with a couple of internal links. Okay, let's go to markdown to HTML and let's just paste this in. And I have the title and the description pre-populated. And the SEO score is 71. The word count is 815. 
and agility rider so far is ignoring my internal links for some reason so the um, the few links that it has are external links some of them are to my competitors so i don't like that and that doesn't happen very often so this is surprising to me so i'm yet to see a single internal link usually it's not like that but uh, we are testing the seo score and not the internal linking capabilities so as you can see a bunch of external links but no internal links at all okay the score to beat is 71 let's see and this is 76 and 812 words so a better effort but unfortunately no internal links and the word counts very comparable so i would have to give it to both so even though Udicom showed a um, lower seo score it didn't include internal links and to be quite honest i would have to run this prompt with each of the tools uh, maybe three to four times and then take an average i don't have <laughs> that much time so let's just say they are pretty even and they should be because they're using the same llm opus cloud 3 opus now let's look at the modes which is a more interesting comparison let me close down the neuron writer so for the modes perplexity has some unique ones so uh, the all that i'm using like 99 percent of the time then the academic for academic papers and research then the writing mode that uh, is slightly better at writing and provides a longer output but is not connected to web and i have no idea why that is then there is the wolfram mode that is used for computations then youtube that has access to youtube videos and reddit so i use reddit to look at testimonials uh, software reviews even some keyword research and sub niches so this mode is very valuable and let's just say perplexity has six modes now back to you.com we have the smart mode which is the quickest one most reliable for a majority of your day-to-day -day tasks then we have the genius mode for complex reasoning the research mode with uh, in-depth citations and then the creative mode where you can generate your images logos infographics and yeah genius mode also works as a data scientist so you would do your computations here so just on paper formally you.com has four modes and i have no idea uh, which one is better because uh, you have the creative mode that i absolutely love i love the uh, in-depth research mode but perplexity has access to youtube that uh, u.com does not so it's a coin toss uh, and i would have to give a slight edge to perplexity now to the images so perplexity is notorious for not having a great image generation feature having said that they do give you access to three of the different uh, image models so playground 2.5 Dolly 3 and Stable Diffusion XL that you can choose from. So let me choose Dolly 3. And the way it works, uh, this is the article that we've just generated. You go to Generate Image and you can choose whatever fits the topic of your generation. It will address that. This is an image depicting Agility Writer AI on a piece of paper. But also, not many people know that if you click on Generate Image and then go to this uh, tool icon, you can use custom prompts. So if I wanted to have a Labrador for some weird reason i would go cinematic style for example and then sitting labrador and go submit and this way i can generate another image that either is not related to the topic that i've just generated or is something very specific that the ai by default is not generated or provided this image is pretty nice with u.com uh, it's very seamless so let's just say this is the article we've just generated i don't have to change anything i don't have to, cho to change the chat that i'm in i just go creative and generate a cinematic image of a sitting labrador and this is a very simple example i can uh, generate logos i can generate diagrams and the chat remains the same so if i were to share this to somebody else my editor for example or a va they will have access to everything both the text and the image and this is the image it's equally good and i can regenerate it i can download it and it looks good looks good so again it depends on your taste really uh, for the ux i would give a slight edge to you.com for the sheer option of choosing between three different ai image models i would choose perplexity and i would say they, they are pretty even still not a huge huge difference now to the gpds if you wanted to use your custom agent you would go to library then collections start a new collection you can title your collection as you should use a custom emoji or a picture then describe it 
and then use a prompt and uh, you either make it shareable or non-shareable and as you can see i've got uh, quite a few collections outline genius the writing style the eat guru uh, extractor and so on and so forth one of the downsides is that you obviously leave the initial chat you're in and so the another downside is that uh, different prompts work best with different allm models so for example the osa extractor works best with gpt4 Whereas the writing style works best with Claude, and I would have to change the LLM manually inside of the settings each time. But with uh, u.com, you can assign different LLMs to different uh, assistants. So if you watch my previous videos, I, I usually do that that way. So this assistant is called Brent Voice, and I'm using Opus. But I can just as easily create another one, naming it Brent Voice GPT-4, or I can just go edit assistant and change the model to whichever one I want. And again, it's very seamless within this chat. I can switch to brand voice opus so I would have to again it's a coin toss uh, but I would have to give a slight edge to u.com again this is my personal preference I like the UX side of it it's just simpler and so given the fact that you can pair different LLMs with different assistants just way more powerful now to the unique features with perplexity since we've discussed a lot of things already the only unique feature that I could think of was the pages so this one here and I have a video about it so you basically insert the topic you want your page to be about and a page will be generated looking like this so th this is a page that I had generated prior top AI site hustles of 2024 and this is nicely formatted com complemented with citations images tables uh, the only downside for now I have no idea how to use it for SEO <laughs> It would have been great for parasitic SEO if this was ranking. This is not ranking for now. And I cannot really publish this uh, anywhere else, like on my blog, for example. But this is a nice feature. I'm sure we'll see more and more use cases in the future. With u.com, the only thing that I could think of was the apps. So if we go to uImagine, for example, we can see that uh, there is an image generator that you can uh, change the quality of generations, use preset styles, and there is a uh, resolution enhancer as well. And there is a bunch of different uh, agents uh, that I haven't apps that I haven't even touched upon so this is a nice feature that I will probably record a separate video about so all in all again uh, both have unique features and uh, I'm leaning towards perplexity so I think pages is a better unique feature than apps but then again, uh, maybe I'm not uh, using the apps correctly. Now, the final two, the memory feature. This is easy. With u.com, it's very similar to ChatGPT. You go to personalization, and then you have u.com store all of your important information about you, your business, your aspirations, how you like your content to be. And then it affects all the generations that you get. With perplexity, it's a little bit more complicated, a little bit less intuitive. It's called the AI profile. And I actually have it off, and I've had it off for quite a while because it messes up with every generation so if i want something specific i use collections or i just use custom prompting so i'm not using this at all so again very even but i would have to give a, a slight edge to u.com because it's just easier to use this feature i mean then finally to the ux i would have to give this 10 out of 10 and perplexity is gonna be 5 out of 10 sorry but but i like the seamless nature of u.com so everything is in one chat, in one space that I can share. With perplexity, there is a lot of back and forth. So every time I want to change something, I have to leave my chat. Every time I want to use a collection, I have to leave my chat and so on and so forth. And once again, the biggest drawback is that uh, once I've chosen my LLM, everything that I'm doing is done by that LLM. So I cannot uh, switch them around easily. So I would have to give a match to uh, u.com so let's count so just the blue ones one two three four five six seven eight and with perplexity it's one two three four five so again formally on paper quote unquote u.com is a winner and i think this is a better suited tool for beginner bloggers and seos the one of the reasons i'm not canceling my perplexity account is because of the modes so I really like the Reddit mode and the YouTube mode. So this is kind of a deal breaker of sorts. So uh, once u.com gets access to YouTube, this is going to be all over probably for perplexity for me. Uh, because u.com uh, for 15 bucks per month lets you play around with 15 models. The experience is seamless. You can generate images, you can write, you can do your research, you can code. And I've done that. And yeah, it's very inexpensive. And yeah, so don't forget to sign up for my custom ChatGPT prompts library, which will also sign you off for my newsletter that will be issued on Thursday. Hope this was helpful. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.